We have with us Robert Lighton. He is the Vice President of Policy and Research at Kaufman Foundation. He also served in his earlier life at the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, he has great experience with the government. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you. Thank you very much. A lot of people, or should I say all of them, have enjoyed your conversation on the stage. So okay. it's time for the audience to get a little taste of what you said there. Okay. Um, I've been speaking to a lot of speakers today and the idea was that, look, U.S. is the, the only or the last remaining superpower. We should leverage our potential not just with the might. Uh, we come and give aid. We provide loans. Uh, it has worked to some extent. hasn't worked to many extents. This is a good opportunity. It's a new era. Let's promote entrepreneurship. Right. Your take on it. Well, uh, the, the good thing about promoting entrepreneurship is that it doesn't cost a lot of money. Uh, and uh, it's also something that appeals naturally to people wherever they are. Uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a truism that people are inherently entrepreneurial. They want to have a better life, and they're willing to work hard. But they need the right policies, the right framework, the right society uh, to advance their objectives. And so when the United States goes to any particular country in the world and talks directly to the people, um, it naturally is pushing on an open door uh, because people want to make a better life. But often the problem that we have in America is that uh, many people around the world are under governments that make it difficult for, the, for their own people to be entrepreneurs. They have all kinds of barriers that make it impossible to establish a business quickly, make it very expensive, make it difficult to hire and fire workers and so forth. And so we have, a, we have probably billions of people around the world who are trapped and are incapable of being entrepreneurs and realizing their dreams. You raised a very good point uh, on the stage, which is about uh, oligarchy. And most of the nations, as you pointed out, receive aids or loans, which have this inherent culture. And we are, like you said, preventing young uh, generations to come up in, 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 uh, on the economic ladder. We have a great model here in Silicon Valley. We have a good ecosystem. A lot of developed economies have tried to inculcate this, but with minimal success. Can we say that, you know, well, you get this with strings attached? Because we already do that, but it hasn't been successful. What is your proposal, do you think, in our mm -hmm. wild dream that, you know, this is where we can cut down the oligarchy, the influence of these, you know, huge families who have huge controls on business houses in, in, in many countries? Well, actually, the problem of oligarchic capitalism and how to get it to change or to morph into entrepreneurial capitalism and to uh, even bureaucratic capitalism where you get big firms. This is one of the great challenges of the 21st century. Um, you know, a flip thing to say is, well, uh, it would be great to have revolution, peaceful revolution. That is, that the oligarchs who are running the societies are overturned by the masses of people who want to be free and run their countries. In a way, actually, and before we move on to other ideas, that is what happened when the wall came down, Berlin Wall came down, and Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe was liberated. Uh, because actually communism was a form of oligarchy. Um, it's not often thought of that way. It was, um, it was state ownership of the means of production, but the reality is, as a communist societies, uh, all the power and the money was concentrated at the very top. Um, so peaceful revolution is clearly something that can help, um, and the United States uh, doesn't have to um, uh, do any more than basically announce its ideals to the rest of the world and let the world take over. But the great hope that I personally have, especially after the reading that I've been doing and talking to a lot of people from Silicon Valley and, and, and uh, Web 2.0 entrepreneurs, and that is that the internet offers us, I think potentially, the greatest weapon against oligarchy there is in two respects. Number one is it offers or it makes it possible for people to form protest movements and organizations much more cheaply and inexpensively and more rapidly than ever before. Because now with all these social networking sites, people are talking to each other, they're meeting each other, and there have been peaceful protests that have amounted in variety of, in, in various places around the world um, seeking more democratic rights. Well, eventually, I hope someday uh, there will be entrepreneurs, 
people who say, look, we want this ministry that's stopping us from getting our licenses and so forth to give us our licenses or do whatever in the service of entrepreneurship. And the internet can be a tool for that. And the fact that there are going to be billions of, of cell phones around the world with people access to the internet, that's going to make it possible to accomplish that kind of peaceful revolution. The second way, perhaps, the net can lead a revolution is that a parallel system of law is developing on the internet. Um, call it cloud computing um, or an eBay law. Anybody who does business on eBay now knows that if you don't obey eBay's rules, you don't get to do business. And it doesn't matter whether it's the rules of Oregon or Hawaii or Louisiana, it's eBay's rules that count. So eBay has created a parallel legal system. Well, think about eBay all over the world, that kind of model, where essentially you're doing business over the internet and it does not matter what the law is in Nigeria or Kenya or Pakistan or any particular country, it's the, it's the law of the internet. And uh, I think as long as uh, uh, we can develop a parallel legal system, people can skip over their hard physical legal system, and the more business that's, conduct that's conducted on the internet, the greater chance we have to basically doing an end run around the oligarchies who are uh, basically providing a chokehold uh, on entrepreneurship in many parts of the world. Okay. Robert, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.